Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about DIC. Today, we have a mnemonic about disseminated intravascular coagulation. So, let's get started. Before we start, let me answer the question of the previous video. What is the difference between acute decompensated DIC and chronic DIC? So, here is acute decompensated DIC, and here is chronic compensated DIC. Acute, sudden onset. Chronic, slow onset. Acute, we have coagulation and bleeding at the same time. We call it a thrombohemorrhagic disorder. But chronic compensated, we have coagulation or bleeding. What are the precipitating factors for acute decompensated DIC? Trauma, tumor, sepsis, snake bites, pancreatitis, nephrotic syndrome, blood transfusion, etc. But in chronic compensated DIC, uh, just solid tumor. Acute is acute. We have an acute freaking emergency. We have ran out of platelets. That's why the platelet count is low, which will prolong the bleeding time. PT and PTT are high because we have consumed our coagulation factors. D-dimer and fibrin degradation products are high because of activated fibrinolysis. However, chronic is chronic. It's slow. It takes a long time. So, we got time to compensate and regenerate our platelets. So, the platelet count will be normal. Bleeding time will also be normal. We have time to make new coagulation factors to replace the old consumed ones. And that's why coagulation factors, normal. PT and PTT, also normal. The only abnormal thing that you might find in chronic compensated DIC is elevated D-dimer and fibrin degradation products. And even when they are elevated, they are not that high. So just one arrow. Is it possible to find low platelet count and high bleeding time, high PT and high PTT, low coagulation factors in chronic DIC? Yeah, it is possible. After all, it's still a DIC. We have two types of fibrinolysis, primary and secondary. Primary, plate count is normal, and D-dimer is also normal. Secondary, plate count is low, D-dimer is so high. Which one of these do you think DIC will fit into? It's here, baby. DIC is here because plate count is low and D-dimer is elevated in cases of DIC. Also, please remember that DIC is always secondary to something else. And that's why you need to find the underlying cause of DIC. Otherwise, DIC is not going away. I have 50 hematology cases on my website. These cases are not for the faint-hearted. These are only for excellent students. DIC clinically. X, X, X. True, true, true. Primary hemostasis is gone. Secondary hemostasis is gone. Fibrolysis overactive, so it's also abnormal. I bleed from every orifice. I bleed from every scratch. I bleed from every wound. And here is my mnemonic. D-I-C. D-I-C. Three, four, five. D. D-dimer is high. Fibrin degradation products. High. Fibrinogen degradation products. Also high. I. Abrupt you placenta or obstetric complications, bleeding from every orifice, transfusion can trigger and precipitate the DIC. Acute pancreatitis is a precipitating factor for DIC. You need to treat the underlying cause. There is always an underlying cause. DIC is always secondary to something else. Coagulation and then bleeding, we call it a thrombohemolytic disorder. They happen at the same time, specifically in acute. DIC. Sepsis, snake bite. So this is the C sound. And then you have cryoprecipitate or fresh frozen plasma to try to treat the DIC. Cryoprecipitate will replace fibrinogen. DIC is depicted here by the dice. This is from Picmonic. DIC is a bleeding state. It's also a coagulation state. Precipitating factors include snake bite, trauma, obstetric complications, especially abrupt to placenta or retained products of conception, acute pancreatitis, tumor, especially solid tumors, nephrotic syndrome, here is the nerd frog, and blood transfusion. Please don't forget that the patient is bleeding from every orifice, bleeding from every scratch, bleeding from every wound. In my previous video, I gave you two clinical scenarios. I gave you the patient who had septic shock, followed by ARDS, followed by DIC. I gave you another case about the lady who had abrupt to placenta and then complications, which included amniotic fluid embolism, followed by DIC, which is the most common cause of death in this case. 
This discount is not gonna last forever. Get my antibiotics course. You can get a 25% discount, only five left. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com and use the promo code antibiotics25 at checkout. This table will conquer your fears. Please remember that acute DIC has low platelet count, high bleeding time, prolonged PT and PTT. Also, D-dimer is high, fibrin degradation products is high. How about coagulation factors? They have been consumed. Don't forget that we see schistocytes with DIC, we see schistocytes with TTP, we see schistocytes with hemolytic uremic syndrome, whether it's typical or atypical. Schistocytes is also known as helmet cell or fragmented cell or fragmented red blood cell. Question of the day. Please mention at least five diseases with elevated D-dimer. The answer will be in the next video. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course. Go to Picmonic to have tons of Picmonics, which are visual mnemonics. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.